Good morning. Thanks for joining us as we celebrate making a milestone in the global business and analytics complex. It's becoming a reality now. We're beginning construction on the first building, the data analytics and decision sciences building. Now, I think you know we achieved this milestone together after years of planning and design. Let me tell you a little of what you can expect during this morning's celebration. Lynn Dowdy is co-hosting with me. I think all of you know Lynn. She's an alumna from the class of 1985 and is immediate past CEO of KPMG. Now she serves on several corporate boards, including for Boeing. Lynn is one of our most dedicated Hokies. She's giving the university her service in multiple areas. She's a tri-chair of the university's Boundless Impact Campaign. She's a long-term cabinet member for the Pamplin Advisory Council. And she's an advisory board member for the Innovation Campus. In just a few minutes, Lynn will facilitate a student panel. And I think that panel will give you an idea of how students view their experiences today and how they expect GBAC to improve those experiences for future generations of Hokies. After that, you'll get a faculty perspective from Dr. Broderick Turner, new member of our, a new member of our marketing department. And next, I'll answer some of your questions in a segment that's, co -facil that's facilitated by the co-presidents of the Dean's Advisor Board of Students. And finally, we'll have three alumni, Chris Sheehan, Willis Blackwood, and Mary McVeigh. They're lined up to ex explain why they support GBAC and to predict some changes they believe will happen with the educational experiences here at Virginia Tech. Think about what it really means to be a business school and what really matters, especially at a land-grant university like Virginia Tech. We exist to serve the interests of the people of our state and to help society more generally. Now, that means something perhaps as practical as assuring our graduates are in demand by employers, and we're helping the economy to grow. <clears throat> it's also got to include teaching our students about community and the value of being ethical. As a business school, we aspire to create the next generation of business leaders who will use their education, including their experiences, to help solve some of society's greatest problems. We need to collaborate. We need to work with others to have the best chance of success with that mission. We wanna provide our students with the best business school experience possible anywhere in the world. GBAC is already playing a big role in setting us up for success in achieving Pamplin's mission. When it's complete, GBAC will help Virginia Tech achieve its larger goals for many generations of students. One of the key decisions we made when we were designing GBAC was to support interdisciplinary education and research using teams. As you heard in the opening video, we'll have faculty and students from three colleges in the Data Analytics and Decision Sciences building, from Science, Computer Science from Engineering, and of course, Pamplin. GBAC is going to accelerate the change and the accomplishments we've seen over the past several years. We build strength by developing interdisciplinary areas for instruction and research we call the Pamplin Pillars. Now, for example, we've identified and we've invested in business analytics as one of our pillars. That focused investment allowed us to attract some of the top scholars in the world to Pamplin. We've achieved top five national rankings in management science and business analytics in our BIT and Masters of IT programs. That strength doesn't come from a single part, from a single department, but from every department in Pamplin. The strength of each area is making the reputation for business analytics at Virginia Tech really strong. We've got programs such as the MATA, that's the Masters of Accounting with Data Analytics, which was jointly developed and which is supported by KPMG. And by the way, Virginia Tech was one of only about 10 universities that was selected for this program by KPMG. Our faculty in finance 
have used business analytics for decision making as a part of student education for decades. Recently, our finance faculty, with support from colleagues in engineering, helped develop the FinTech option that takes business analytics to a new level. We've also been very successful with business analytics programs in other areas, including management consulting and analytics, an option in that major, marketing analytics programs, hospitality and uh, tourism analytics programs, and our real estate majors complete a design project using analytics to plan the development of a green site to a commercially viable property. So back in 2014, when we chose business analytics as a pillar, and we followed up on that decision with investments, we made today's partnership with science and computer science on the data analytics and decision science building a really obvious fit. We've also invested in entrepreneurship as another Pamplin pillar. A key step was when we created a center that's since been named the Apex Center for Entrepreneurship. Now, starting with almost nothing, a few years ago, Apex now is providing experiential learning programs to thousands of students from across the university. It's helping teams of Virginia Tech students launch innovative and successful companies. Apex efforts led uh, Virginia Tech in being ranked among the top 25 best entrepreneurship programs in the country. Virginia Tech has been recognized for its research in entrepreneurship. Thanks to research by our management faculty and other faculty, Virginia Tech is now recognized as number one, number one in the country for entrepreneurship research. We're also building strength in uh, security, privacy, and trust, and the human condition. These are Pamplin's emerging pillars. Pamplin will have better programs, <clears throat> attract better students, retain better faculty, and secure more funding for these programs with facilities that are designed to really support them. The design of GBAC, including the space we share with computer science and College of Science will continue to enhance those strengths in Pamplin. <clears throat> the space we live in, the space we work in, it shapes what we do. It influences whom we interact with and how often. Even, Joe, even though GBAC isn't constructed, some faculty candidates are already weighing the value that they'll someday receive from it as they're considering their careers. The data and decision sciences building is a tangible step in showing how the design of a building can shape what happens inside. The second academic building allows us to do that at a college-wide scale. It'll provide space for the remainder of Pamplin's faculty. It'll bring together all the Pamplin disciplines, including hospitality and tourism management and real estate, currently in separate buildings. And as GBAC initiative grows, we'll be able to accommodate Pamplin's growing student body. The second building like data and decision sciences is designed to support programs and activities that are collaborative across disciplines. It has dedicated spaces to help educate students beyond formal courses. So for example, we will operationally and physically integrate the services for academic advising and career services through the Ben and Lynn Dowdy and KPMG Foundation undergraduate program suite. That physical integration isn't possible in Pamplin Hall. It'll have a big impact on the success of our students while they're in college and when they go to their careers. GBAC will have technology that makes virtual interactions with speakers and leaders from around the world convenient. It'll also have specialized spaces for students to learn from experiences that are related to their careers. No matter how hard we work with Pamplin Hall, we won't achieve the creative space that can come from live interactions among people solving problems, people with different backgrounds, people with different perspectives. These are some of the key impacts that GBAC will have. Now, let me uh, ask if Lynn Dowdy could come on and lead us in a student panel to explore a little bit about how this project called GBAC is gonna change the experiences for students. Now, Lynn? 
Well, thank you, Robert, and, and thank you for those kind words. And, and also congratulations to you um, on this momentous day and celebration. And I, I remember when you first joined, this was um, Virginia Tech, it was, it was just a dream uh, that, that we all had. And this is such an important milestone. And, and personally, it's a real privilege for uh, Ben and me to join other uh, KPMG partners, uh, Virginia Tech alum, other companies and supporting uh, this initiative, which is just so important to uh, the future of education, to the future of business. I think we all know that understanding data, uh, the analytics that go with that, the uh, having uh, digital transformation in the forefront of education um, is critical. And, and I also had a, a personal warm spot for the undergraduate program suite, uh, which I, I think, as you said, Robert, it, it can serve as, as the bridge uh, at, for our students into uh, their careers, um, providing that career hub, the advice that they need. And also that, that bridge is, is, is a two-way bridge. Uh, it, it also allows us as alum uh, to come back and connect uh, to uh, the students in a, in a really meaningful uh, way. Um, so today we, we have the opportunity, speaking of uh, amazing students, uh, we have uh, four uh, terrific students that are here uh, with us today. Um, and unfortunately, uh, they won't have uh, the firsthand benefits of, of some of these new uh, facilities and collaborative space. Uh, but I think it will be really great to get their perspective um, as, as they think about uh, the education that they've had, uh, what that education can be for future generations um, of Hokies. So I'm, I'm delighted to have uh, them join me. Uh, we'd like to have just an interactive uh, session uh, with, with them today. And, and I think first, as, as uh, you all introduce yourselves, um, it, would, it would really be great to, to, I think we're all so curious um, about uh, what you've been through. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're the, the, the students who have been so impacted by uh, the pandemic uh, learning. We never could have imagined learning and your college experience to uh, go through what you all um, have gone through. So uh, maybe as you introduce yourself, uh, just give us a little bit of a feel for also just how you're doing um, as you've kind of lived through this uh, really unprecedented time. So who wants to start us off? I can go ahead and, and go first. Hi, everyone. My name is Hillary Simpson, and I am a junior majoring in hospitality and tourism management and minoring in event and experience management. My field of interest is event planning and management. And as for how I'm doing, I'm doing pretty, pretty well, actually. I think that Virginia Tech as a university has handled coronavirus as well as they could have making that switch to an online and virtual learning experience. And I'm a, I'm a pretty independent student as it is, so it hasn't been too hard for me to stay on track and make sure I'm still getting those good grades. And I would have to say a positive of coronavirus has been a, being able to use my time as I wish. So I've been spending a lot of time back home in Orlando, Florida with my family and maybe hiding out from the snow as much as I can. And I'm also a pamphlet and engage undergraduate teaching assistant, which is a new program that started when coronavirus hit. And I have to say that it has been life-changing. Being able to interact with these students to help them to learn better and overall grow the HTM program has just been something very special to me and I hope to continue working in the program. But in the end, I do feel very prepared for going into the HTM industry in, in just a, about a year and a half here. I think that FireTag HTM has done just an awesome job preparing me for that. And I'm so happy to be here. Thanks, Hillary. All right, I can uh, go next. My name is Matthew Bartlett. I'm a senior here at 
Pamplin, and I'm studying uh, hospitality and tourism management, and then I'm also majoring in corporate finance. And uh, my field of interest is hospitality financial management, which isn't a huge surprise. Um, yeah, so answering the question, I think that it's been a transition, none the least, are obviously for everybody. Uh, but what you've really found here as a student at Virginia Tech is that the Hokie community will preserve uh, through any sort of trials and tribulations that the world has to throw at us. And the world will try their hardest to, uh, you know, with COVID and, you know, having to transition to a fully online community. It's definitely different, but I'm proud and happy to say that it hasn't diminished my experience at all here uh, as a student. Great. I can go ahead and go next. Um, hi guys, my name is Reed Funter. I'm a junior um, in hospitality tourism management and minoring in events ex and experience management, as well as leadership through the Corps of Cadets. Um, overall, with the whole COVID-19 situation, um, it's taken away a little bit from everybody's lives. Um, I feel like um, there have been a long list of negatives, but something I try to do a lot is um, try to take something away that's positive. So um, what I've been thinking about is I'm sure the industries that everybody in Pamplin Fields is working in, everybody's been working with Zoom. Um, it's just something that's kind of been integrated and it's not going away once COVID is over. So we, as we're learning solely through, uh, through Zoom, will be able to take that experience and transfer it into our professional careers once we graduate. So that's something I'm taking away from it. I can go next. Uh, my name is Razan Saleh and I'm a senior BIT major with a computer science minor. And like my other panelists have said, in spite of everything that has happened and moving um, to learning virtually, it has been a big adjustment for all, especially as I like to learn in the classroom with my professors and classmates. Um, and as a BIT major, a lot of my classes are group based, but luckily there has been a lot of support from the department and professors making the transition easier for everyone by having breakout rooms in the classroom and giving us class time to even work on our projects. So I would have to say, even given the virtual learning environment, there has been some positives and those positives have um, made the connection with my classmates a lot stronger. Well, congratulations on being so resilient and also so positive in your in your outlook on you know dealing with a really uh, tough situation. And I know that's gonna that's gonna serve you well go going forward. So you know we're here today celebrating uh, the global business and analytics complex. And as I said when uh, you know when I when I started, unfortunately. You all won't have uh, the the real benefits of this, but you you see the vision and 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 the dream and and I'd be curious to just hear each of your perspectives on. I know you've been you, you, you've heard all about the different aspects of this and what this means uh, to Pamplin uh, going forward. Um, it'd be great to just hear some of the things that you think will make the experience of those coming behind you, you know, more impactful because we have this. Who wants to go first? I can start it off. Okay. So I like to say I'm really excited about the new collaboration spaces in the buildings, especially as a BIT major since a lot of my work is group-based and in previous semesters, it was difficult finding a place to work in Pamplin and even the library since it would be filled with other students doing their projects. I think this, um, these new collaboration spaces will allow students to work in a more business environment that won't just allow them um, to work in a more efficient way, but also in a more professional feel that will help them in the real world once they graduate. So I think that aspect, I'm really excited for um, new students coming in to have that experience. That's a good one. Yeah, I can speak next. Just thinking about GVAC and the physical location of it is just incredible because thinking about Pamplin Hall, is where most of our business classes are. But as an HTM major, a lot of our classes are over in Wallace Hall or Lytton Reeves, which is over near McComas Gym, kind of on, kind of near Lane Stadium on the residential side of campus. And let me tell you, that is a long walk. <laughs> I remember a couple of semesters ago, Reed and I actually had a class together. First, we were in Pamplin, 
Then we had to go to Lytton Reeves and then all the way back over to new classroom building. So we were just zigzagging all across campus that week. And it would just be so helpful to have everything under one roof. And I don't just mean the physical location from that standpoint, but also mentally, it would be really nice to have HTM under the same roof as all of the other Pamplin majors. And like Razan was saying about those collaboration spaces, we can work together in groups for our classes, but we can also collaborate with other majors and work as a business college overall. And I think that that benefit is just so great. And I'm really excited for the future. That's great. I'm kind of going to uh, continue off that topic. Um, along with the phys physical location and more on the mental side of things, um, as Pamplin students, we all start off, all Pamplin students start off with all of the same classes. So you really get that feel of connectedness with all the Pamplin students. But as an HTM student, like Hillary said, um, we kind of start drifting away with um, the difference in buildings. Um, so feeling that connectedness um, year after year, um, continuing through junior and senior year would be really great to um, have all the Pamplin majors kind of together in the same building. Um, another thing is with the new Marriott Family Foundation Hokie Lab, um, the new state-of-the-art kitchen, um, one of the things I haven't been able to do this year is I have an all online um, cooking lab. Um, part of the reason was the kitchen was too small to keep everybody safe with COVID-19. So having a larger kitchen, state of the art appliances, um, things of that nature would be really, really helpful for um, these future HTM students. Oh, I know everybody's excited about that one. That's going to, you know, give you amazing hands on experience. How about you, Matt? Hello. Um, yeah, so I guess going off of that, talking about improved resources um, and the data initiative, that's totally, I, I just fully believe in this initiative because data is for progress. And as a part of the undergraduate curriculum committee, I have advocated for improving data sciences and integration of data into courses for HTM majors. And I just fully believe that data is what's brought humans into their modern era, the modern information era of society. And just through big data analysis, we're just by breaking down thousands of rows of endless Excel, we are able to offer better service, better research, better reporting, and better management of both human and financial resources. So as a member of the STR team that uh, competed in the market study competition uh, last semester, I just, fully am advocating for data storytelling and it's something really important to me. And I just, I'm excited for all of the new incoming Hokies that are gonna have the opportunity to take advantage of these magnificent resources. Yes, and ha having state-of-the-art technology to do that and visualization, I mean, it's that that's, um, that's gonna be critical for learning going forward and to do it in a, in a collaborative space. Um, I'm also interested in, as, as you guys think about the Career Center as, as well, um, and, and, and some of the benefits of, of that. I can go ahead and talk a little yeah. bit about the Career Center. Um, as a leader of two Pamplin organizations, we work closely with the Career Center and offering our members opportunities that the Career Center has listed. So I'm really excited about this new Fresh Career Center since it's gonna be separate um, from the advi advising center. Since right now, if you go to Pamplin, they're really packed together. And sometimes some of the events are actually in the Pamplin Hall. So I think having this space dedicated to the Career Center will benefit the students greatly since it can create, again, an open environment for them to meet with other students to work on professional development like resume prep while also getting help and support from the experts. So I'm really excited for the new incoming um, Hokies to get that firsthand advantage um, and getting help navigating the corporate world. Can I tell you what the Career Center was like in 1985? No air conditioning, no ceilings, it was a, you know, if you're stressed out enough um, when you go for your interview and um, and then you, you're sweating and you can hear everybody else talking. Um, I think when we when we see, I mean, you guys certainly don't have it like that now, but to see what the the future is going to bring for career uh, centers, it's it's going to be uh, really fantastic. Well, I, I want to thank each of you. Uh, you make us all so proud of, of seeing just um, 
amazing Hokies who've been so resilient. I mean, you've been in school at the hardest time, I think, that um, any of us could ever imagine. And you've come through it with, with uh, grace, new skills, a positive attitude. And, and we can't wait to see all that you accomplish. And, and thank you for just taking some time out of your day today uh, to share that with all of us. Uh, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So now I have the, the great pleasure of uh, introducing uh, one of my friends, uh, Chris Sheehan, who's going to uh, give his perspective. Uh, Chris is a 1987 uh, graduate of Pamplin, uh, started his early career at, at, at KPMG and became one of the most distinguished KPMG alums that I can think of who went on to do uh, taking on some of the most senior uh, roles at Liberty uh, Media Corporation and the related companies, and um, and also has been a tremendous role model on what it means to be uh, a hokey and to give back, and and we've always seen you do that, Chris, time and time again, um, and continues to uh, serve on uh, Pamplin's cabinet and and giving back in so many ways. So, uh, Chris, thank you for for being part of this, and and we'd love to hear your perspective, Chris. Right. Thank you. you, thank you, Lynn. Appreciate that uh, warm introduction. Um, I've been asked why GBAC is a high priority to me and with my charitable giving. And I'm gonna address it from three different perspectives. Uh, one, personal experience. The experience and education that I received at Virginia Tech and the Pamplin School is what laid the foundation for me to have a successful career in business. Uh, the school is important to me. Some of my greatest memories are from there and it just holds a, a special place in my heart. Uh, secondly, there's a need. Pamplin's facilities were antiquated and cramped when I went there 30 plus years ago. And the school has grown significantly over these years and it's only exacerbated the problem. Uh, further, the facilities are ill-equipped to support the technologies that are available for use in top-notch education programs of today. In order for us to hire the best faculty and, and entice the best students to enroll at Virginia Tech, it's just extremely important that we have great facilities. And, and lastly, um, challenge to make a difference. Uh, the school needs me, needs people like me, and frankly, all alumni to step up and make a difference. Um, luckily, projects of this scale don't happen very frequently, but when they do, uh, it requires all hands on deck type of um, mentality. Unfortunately, Virginia Tech has not had uh, a stellar record of alumni giving through the years. And I wanna help change that and uh, change that by taking action and setting a good example for others to follow. The GBAC project is revolutionary. The, it's extremely innovative. Uh, it will allow for uh, facilities to better support the evolving changes in the school's curriculum. Uh, we're morphing from uh, a strictly discipline-based teaching model to more of an interdisciplinary team-based model, which ultimately will provide our students with an educational experience that more closely resembles the modern workplace. Uh, these changes are revolutionary, are, are very cutting edge in academia, and will enhance Virginia Tech's reputation and make its graduates more highly sought after in the job market. Uh, another point that I want to make is uh, we've heard uh, about distance learning and the impact of COVID that has had across universities in the country. I want it to be known that Virginia Tech will always be known and respected as a great, as great for its in-person experiences. While it's true that COVID has forced universities across the country to expedite the rollout of distance learning, I think it's fair to say that, um, and I think it's fair to say that many aspects of distance learning are here to stay. 
This model will allow for many efficiencies in higher education that you know, are well beyond the scope of my comments today. However, distance learning was never intended to replace the need for in-person classes. In fact, the need for team-based interactive projects and learning experiences are as important today as ever. Development of relationship building skills and abilities to interact effectively with other professionals outside of your specific area of purview is a critical skill set that employers highly value and demand from their recruits. In summary, distance learning is a valuable tool for universities to employ appropriately, but not in any way does it obviate the need for the GBAC project and, and what it represents to the future. So those are my comments for today. I'd like to introduce Broderick Turner. Um, Broderick has uh, recently joined us as a professor of marketing. Uh, Broderick joined Pamplin this year uh, with a PhD in the School of Management at uh, Northwestern University. He does great innovative research on many topics, including research that considers the intersection of marketing, technology, and race. Uh, he also runs a weekly lab meeting with interdisciplinary scholars on tackling race and prejudice called the TRAP Lab for short. And we're excited that Broderick came to Pamplin. Take it away. All right. So again, my name is uh, Dr. Broderick Turner. And all right. So I want to emphasize a point um, that Chris Sheen made, right? Currently, Virginia Tech is a top 20 marketing department in the country as measured by research productivity. Not only that, but Virginia Tech has recruited the best cohort of junior professors in the country. And that's not hyperbole. Myself, Dr. Shilpa Madden, Trans Goka, Yan Zur, Dream Team, right? Uh, and we can back it up because we're really talented and very good at doing research and bringing that into our classroom. But the only thing preventing us from being the best department in the country is research facilities. Now, why do I say that? High-end research facilities allow us to learn more and create new knowledge faster, and it will also help us bring in more winners like myself and my cohort junior professors. See, I believe in this virtuous circle, right? It's my philosophy that analytics drive research insights, which is what I do, and these lead to measurable success for firms, and then these firm insights feed back in analytics, uh, but more importantly, all of this feeds into our curriculum. Now, as a specific example of this, I spent about three years surveying hundreds of salespeople uh, at four different companies. We measured their emotional intelligence, we measured how confident they are in their emotional skills, and these firms uh, also provided their sales numbers for all these salespeople. And from this data, we were able to find an insight that salespeople with high emotional skills, but only medium levels of confidence a term which we call positive emotional calibration, were the most successful salespeople across all of these firms. My co-authors and I then designed an emotional intelligence feedback tool that we share with the firms and they share with their data. And now they're using it to drive sales and train their sales team. Now this work is set to be published uh, next month, actually the next edition of the Journal of Marketing, which is our premier academic journal in our field. But more importantly, I teach intro to sales now, and I've brought these insights into the teaching for our students. So my students will learn how to improve their emotional intelligence, how to use this emotional intelligence to uh, be better salespeople, and they'll be ahead of any other sales student in the country because they're getting new knowledge before anyone else. And these students will go on to do our sales minors, they'll go into sales roles, they're going to, uh, and in the new sales lab, um, and they'll come back and bring more data and we'll get more insights. And this lab will also open Pamplin to the rest of the university, to our engineers, to our computer science majors, because we have all this talent right now to win. We just need these facilities to push us over the top. Because I believe I'm here uh, because I'm a winner and Pamplin is the home of winners and these facilities will help us win more. So, it's my pleasure, actually, to introduce another winner, uh, our next program speaker, which is uh, Willis Blackwood. He's the chair of the Virginia Tech Real Estate Industry uh, uh, Advisory. 
aboard, along with his wife, Mary, he established the Blackwood Development Company, a commercial real estate company. Uh, and over the course of the career, has developed more than 2 million square feet of retail, retail space as a company owner. Uh, so, uh, Willis, take it away. Thank you, Dr. Turner. Uh, as he said, I'm the, actually the co-chair of the Industry Advisory Board for the Virginia Tech Real Estate Program. The program in real estate was fledgling and new seven and a half years ago and had four incoming freshman students. It presently has over 350 majors in the program in, in a very short period of time. Uh, last year, one publication, national publication, rated the program the third best undergraduate real estate program in the United States leaping over significant number of schools that had had programs for decades. And it just shows in a very short period of time, the growth and the quality of the program. And as students continue to graduate and are out in the industry, it's gonna be recognized more and more of what a fabulous program we have at Virginia Tech. And some people on this call may not even be aware the program exists. So we're, we're trying to overcome that. Uh, the goal of the, uh, program is really to, to have more publications, realize the quality of the program, and also at some point in time, a very achievable number one undergraduate real estate program in the United States. Um, real estate is a technical industry, but it's also a very personal industry. It, it's very uh, hand in glove. The real estate decision making requires uh, data and how to analyze it. And the GBAC complex is obviously oriented towards that. Real estate's also very personal and interpersonal relationships have to be developed for people to succeed because it's just not all number crunching and handling it on a computer. It's face-to-face -face many cases. So with the ability for students to interact with each other, other disciplines, it's gonna train them how to work in teams, work individually, go through the thought process, and really be successful in what they do after Virginia Tech. Uh, the GBAC facility sets that stage for that just with the physical structure of what's being created with the labs, the lobbies, uh, breakout areas. It'll uh, help recruit top students to Virginia Tech in the real estate program. And it'll raise the, uh, the, the uh, quality of the program pamphlet in Virginia Tech. Uh, a personal goal that Mary and I have is to help students become educated, go out into the world, succeed, and then give back to the university uh, based on their success in the future. It's sort of our cycle of giving is what we see it as. And that has kept us involved with Virginia Tech for many years. And uh, we hope everyone will enthusiastically support the program and the efforts of Virginia Tech like we have. And with that, I will turn things over to Dr. Simacrest. Well, uh, thanks, Willis, and really thanks to uh, to all of our speakers, to, to Lynn and to Mary and to our students. Um, as you'll see in a minute, uh, I am here with a couple of Pamplin students, uh, Luke Voivoda and Rashida Talasi, and I know them both pretty well. They're co-presidents of the Dean's Advisor Board of Students, and they've agreed to moderate the question and answer period. So. Um, Luke, Rashitha, can I get you to uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves and then go ahead and just jump right into the Q&A from the chat and also from some questions that we've already received. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Dean Sumacrest. Hello, everyone. My name is Luke Voivoda. I'm a graduating senior double majoring in marketing with a concentration in professional sales and finance with a concentration in corporate financial management. Additionally, besides academics, I'm one of the co-presidents of the Dean's Advisory Board of Students. So it's my job to work with Dean Sumacrest and Dean Kanza to help make impactful changes to better the Pamplin community and those inside of it. Hi everyone, my name is Rashitha Thalasi and I'm a graduating senior dual majoring in BIT with a concentration in decision support systems and management with a concentration in consulting. Along with Luke, I'm the other co-president of the Dean's Advisory Board of Students, where we love working with Dean Sumacrest, Dean Kanza, and our members. Together, we listen to Pamplin's community's ideas, concerns, and suggestions to continually work towards bringing the best experience for all individuals in the business school. 
Luke and I will be moderating the Q&A today. We will be asking questions that have been submitted in advance, in addition to pulling some questions from the chat. If there are any questions you all still have, please make sure to put them in the chat. I'll turn it over to Luke for our first question. Thank you so much, Rashitha. So our first question today was actually submitted from the chat. Our first question is, when looking at the video, I couldn't tell exactly where it was shot. Where is GBAC going to be located on the Virginia Tech campus? Um, well, so GBAC has four buildings to it. And the two academic buildings, including the one that's just started construction, is along Price's Fork Road. Um, maybe we can uh, pull up a map. We, we have some images that um, we've stored and had ready, uh, depending on what was being asked. So yeah, so if you look at this uh, map, you'll see that right on, on the very top right side, there's a road that's Price's Fork Road. Amy, maybe you can put your mouse uh, over that a little bit. Um, on the top left, that's where you've got the, uh, the inn and conference center. Um, and then uh, again, on the right, almost at the top, you see uh, kind of a darker maroon kind of color. <clears throat> Those two structures connected with a, a thin structure. Those are the two academic buildings we've been talking about. So academic building two, the one on the right, is the data uh, analytics and decision sciences building. The connector is the commons. And then the one that's on the left um, is actually very close to West Campus Drive. Um, that is the second academic building. And then if you continue on to the left, kind of follow that yellow path, um, there are two other buildings in that same color, uh, that kind of darker maroon. Those are the two residence halls that make up um, the other component of GBAC. Um, and so those are the locations of the four buildings. The two residence halls, by the way, are very close to where the golf course starts, but they're not actually on the golf course. So I ho hope that helps giving you a sense of just where we've got our, uh, our four buildings for GBAC. I think it will. Thank you so much, Dean Simmercrest. Thank you, Dean Simmercrest. Um, our next question is, Will there be enough room in GBAC for all of the Pamplin programs, given the growth of the business school and due to the fact that the College of Engineering and College of Science are partnering on the project? Well, a uh, short answer is yes. So when we designed GBAC, we built it larger than the college actually was at the time. We, we were planning on about a 20% growth. When we added computer science and college of science, we actually expanded the total footprint. Um, you know, and as we go forward, obviously Pamplin is still growing. So we learned a lot about how to efficiently use space as um, we've come through the last few years in Pamplin. And we've gotten some ideas from, um, you know, good ways to use space uh, without necessarily having one person in one office. So I learned that from corporate America, experienced it during the pandemic. Um, and so um, I guess the other thing to say is, well, we will have all of our academic programs located in GBAC as planned. Um, there are clearly some parts of what Pamplin does that are not gonna be in GBAC very intentionally. Look at the most obvious example would be some of the programs we've got up in Northern Virginia, including our MBA. So, but yes, GBAC uh, will be designed to have the space that we need. Thank you, Dean Simacast. So our next question uh, is actually related to coronavirus. So the third question we're gonna ask today is, did COVID make you guys change anything at all about the design for GBAC? You know, I, I think uh, Chris Sheehan alluded to this a bit uh, as he was talking about why he's such a big supporter of GBAC. And, so while we want to have uh, in-person instruction as the primary way to have education for undergraduates in Blacksburg, we know that we're going to do more than just that. Um, and COVID gave us an opportunity, maybe forced us, to try out some of those technologies. So we will have much better technology for distance learning available in GBAC. <clears throat> we can use it for things such as um, connecting a class with speakers or business leaders anywhere in the country or really around the world. 
um, we can use it in, you know, in ways that might um, connect our campuses in Northern Virginia with the campus in Blacksburg. Um, so that, you know, there is an upgrade in technology and maybe space dedicated to some of these ideas that we thought about because of COVID. And then there, there's some behind the scenes changes. Um, obviously, um, you know, we're gonna make sure that the HVAC systems are really uh, high quality and provide uh, not just good ventilation that is um, sort of comfortable to be in the environment of, but also uh, good ventilation to prevent the spread of disease. So lots of ways that COVID has affected us. Thank you, Dean Sumacost. Um, our next question is related to the name of Pamplin. It is, are we still going to be called the Pamplin College of Business once GBAC is complete? Uh, well, great question. And the easy answer is yes. So Pamplin College of Business, it's, it's named for two individuals, uh, R.B. Pamplin Sr. and his son, Dr. R.B. Pamplin Jr. Um, Bob Pamplin was a great businessman. Um, he expanded Georgia Pacific and production methods and markets like you can't imagine. Um, he has been a great entrepreneur. He's been a great philanthropist. His son is carrying on those traditions. And so we proudly carry the name of the Pamplins. Um, now the building, Pamplin Hall, and the college, Pamplin College of Business, are really two different things. So we can take the college with its faculty and students and programs and move it somewhere else. And that's exactly what we'll do with GBAC. Thank you, Dean Simakas. Thank you very much. And this question uh, that was asked in the chat actually uh, kind of goes along with what you were saying, which is uh, what is going to happen to the location of Pamplin Hall when the GBAC move happens? Oh, so um, the academic building called Pamplin Hall is going to remain an academic building called Pamplin Hall for use at Virginia Tech. Um, it really is a great location. Um, it is the right size to house several of the university's units. Uh, you know, it's, it's not the right size for Pamplin, it's not the right space for Pamplin, but it is going, it already is in great demand. A lot of people would like to see us out of there today. So now ultimately, um, which use will it get is not a decision for me to make. There's, that's more presidential decision level making, um, but it has, a, it has an important future for Virginia Tech. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So our next qu next question has actually been asked in advance and in the chat. It is, what is the timeline and implementation plan for GBAC look like? What's the projected completion date for GBAC? Well, so um, the closer you are to today, the uh, more definite and predictable the timeline is. But we do have a timeline for the whole thing. And so the first building is easy. Uh, a building this size is going to take about two years of construction. We started it right at the beginning of 2021. So right about the end of 2022 or maybe very early 2023, you can expect that to be complete. If we look at the next academic building, um, to move forward in that, we need to finish our fundraising. So, you know, that's about an $80 million building just over that. Um, we have secured in various ways through the university and especially through our generous donors. Um, we've got about 70 of the 80 million that has been lined up. And so actually a little less than 10 million left to go. Uh, we'll finish that uh, this academic year and in next academic year. And then uh, we'll be ready to go with that building. And, you know, it's a similar thing. We, we've got uh, some final planning to finish and then probably two years of construction. The residence halls, uh, you know, those uh, can be done uh, simultaneously with some of this other construction. Um, so we're looking at um, kind of a, a redesign of those and getting the funding lined up again. It's coming from auxiliary funding. So uh, everything is, is looking good with that as our time frame. Thank you, Dean. Thank, thank you very much. 
So I know we're coming to a close on the time we have allotted for our Q&A portion. However, I do have one last question I would like to ask you. Uh, this question was actually submitted in advance by one of the Pamplin students. And it reads, it can be really difficult to work on group projects on campus. Virginia Tech doesn't have a ton of spaces that is close by my classes to work on group projects. Is there anything in GBAC that can help out with this problem? Yes, uh, absolutely. And this, this is kind of a central idea for GBAC. Um, so there are multiple answers. One of the most sort of obvious answers to that type of question is team rooms or project rooms. We have designed uh, dozens of these rooms in the two academic buildings. Uh, in fact, uh, we've got some renderings. Uh, Amy, could you pull up? There we go. So there's an example of a team room. Um, you know, it's designed so that it'll be close to places where students are. And uh, they can either be sent there by a professor or arrange it on their own, but uh, you can work together in a small group and have some, some privacy there. <clears throat> the, um, uh, so maybe we can show where these team rooms are located, Amy. Can you pull up the uh, ground floor uh, floor plan? Uh, go to the next one here. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at this, um, there are two banks of team rooms on the right half of this drawing. And Amy is uh, circling around those team rooms. So they're across from um, classrooms. Uh, in the case on the top of this uh, floor plan, they're across from our behavioral and sales labs on the bottom half and close to one of the, the large classrooms. So these are, these are spread through the building, including in academic two. And then there are other spaces where students can work in teams. So Amy, if you could go back to that picture showing the, uh, um, the commons. And so on the, on the left of this drawing is a picture of what the commons could look like and various types of furniture that would be in there and spaces. And then if you look on the right half, this is a, one of the other views uh, or one of the other areas in GBAC. It's actually on the second floor looking down into the atrium or into the commons. And you can see we've got uh, sort of semi-private spaces where students could work in, in groups on uh, team projects, uh, as well as do some informal things. So uh, important point about GBAC, we do have a lot of spaces where students can work together. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Well, uh, Lou, Krishita, um, you know, thanks to you for moderating. And I want to thank everyone who submitted questions. Um, we're capturing the chat. So it may be that you've got other questions or, or maybe you just think of a question now, send it to me um, and we'll get somebody from the team to try to respond to you. Uh, my email, by the way, is bizdean at vt for Virginia Tech dot edu. That's B-U-S-D-E-A-N. Well, today's final alumna speaker is Mary McVeigh. Mary is a very special person to us she is a person with a really big heart, and she was among the first to see the value of GBAC and that, that vision that we've got for Pamplin and now for a broader part of Virginia Tech. She is uh, one of the first people to have made a major contribution, a million dollars, because she wants to help those future generations of Pamplin students and Virginia Tech students. Mary's been a successful businesswoman. She's been an entrepreneur. She's been a key leader and volunteer for us. In fact, uh, Mary's been the first woman to chair the Pamplin Advisory Council. And so that's why we're always gonna think of Mary as the leader of the pack. So Mary, uh, what do you have to say to our alumni and students and faculty and staff on the Zoom with us? Well, thank you so much for having me. I am absolutely delighted to be included in this. And uh, I think GBAC is ground, groundbreaking, pun intended, but I think this is really gonna change Pamplin. And um, I gave that first million because I was so inspired by the people that were talking uh, and about why they were donating. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna double my half million up to a million. 
And I told uh, our Dean this, Dean Sumacrast, and um, I know I would not be where I am today, as successful as I am today, without my education from Pamplin. So um, I'm going to make another offer. I am going to donate another million dollars. And this will be a matching fund for anyone that donates as of today on, I will match dollar for dollar up to a million dollars. And because I think this is, we don't have many opportunities to, um, to put our stamp on, on something as important as a university. And um, that's my challenge. And I hope some of you will consider increasing your donation or making an original donation. Any amount helps. When I made my first donation, it was $100. In 1978, I had just graduated. I was making $12,000 a year. So, a and I had student loans to pay off. So, um, that's an important milestone. And I have kept up my philanthropy since then. And I really um, am so grateful for Dean Sumacrast and, and inspired by him. And I hope that everyone um, agrees with that and, and takes, takes a step forward. So, at prosum, thank you very much. At prosum, Mary, thank you so much. I, I know that uh, everyone's muted, so we're not seeing them clapping, but I'm sure everybody is out there clapping as well. Thanks for speaking to us and, and thanks for your support of GBAC and that special challenge that you just gave us today. As we close out the program, I wanna thank everyone who joined us as speakers and as participants on the, uh, on the Zoom. We're gonna be concluding the program with a special live feed of the actual construction site. And we'll just keep that up there for uh, a little while. And then uh, that will be the end of our program. So um, we're gonna follow up on some of the things that came through in the chat. Let's go Hokies and let's finish GBAC. Let's get this project done.